Hello guys, my name is Coexist and today we're going to take a quick look into Solus OS, otherwise known as the Solus Project. Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of this text at the top of the screen so we can actually see and navigate around. And I do have some, some notes up uh, because I want to give a, a, a brief history as what some of these things are for. Anyways, let's look at their website first. Solus is an operating system that is designed for modern personal computing devices, every tweak enabling us to deliver a singular, cohesive desktop experience. And in that, I do have to agree. We are actually running this on hardware, by the way, as getting this to run in VirtualBox is actually very difficult. Um, I do know that uh, you can actually get Solus to boot correctly if you set your CPU limit down to 1, but that's that defeats the purpose so don't tr uh, you can't really put this in the virtual box unfortunately if you have a spare hard drive about then that's probably going to be your best bet but this is running on hardware and we'll go over some uh system resources when this is uh w w when we move forward all right let's scroll down let's see uh designed for everyone budgie is the flagship desktop of solus designed with a modern user in mind it focuses on simplicity and elegance while providing you the flexibility to make it your own. It also enables you to gain quick access to notifications as well as features like media playback controls, system settings, calendar, and more. Okay, let's see. Stable and secure. Solus provides a stable and reliable platform for computing while keeping your favorite applications up to date and your system secure. Which Speaking of which, as far as the applications in their software repository goes, it is not cluttered. That is actually great news, but we'll talk about that later. Also, Solus is independent. Solus is built from scratch and is supported by the community, providing them the freedom to provide the best experience without being beholden to the interests of other projects or corporate, corporate agendas. Uh, so like most of the ones that are based off of Ubuntu, if Ubuntu screws up, then that you know everyone screws up because they're all based off of Ubuntu um, so yeah that's a basic look at their website of course you can go to their download page and there are um, I'll talk about more more about this later but there's actually two flavors of Solus you can get it in the flagship version which is Budgie we can also get it in Mate yes yes it is actually Mate I know I know it looks like mate it sure looks like mate to me but it's actually Mate um, you can also grab that as well, um, which has the brisk menu and things of that nature. But uh, it's supported on most modern computers. I wouldn't try putting this on a computer that's not, you know, modern. That's probably not what we're going to look at. But let's go ahead and just take a look around and see what we've got. So as a brief history, which uh, you'll have to take this with a grain of salt, I've gotten this from, I've kind of compiled a bunch of different sources together. Um, I'll leave them in the description somewhere. But Solus first came around in 2011 as Solus OS and was actually based off of Debian at this time. Um, however, uh, Solus was later uh, completely rewritten, focusing on the desktop usability and optimization. And then in July of 2016, the founder, IQ Doherty, announced that Solus will discard the concept of fixed point releases, which is what Ubuntu does, you know, where they have the, you've got 15.04, 16.04, 17.04, so on, so on. Uh, but they're, they've discarded that and are now using a rolling release model, which means that um, I do believe it was Solus 1.1. So on Solus 1.1, um, from then on, you will have a rolling release model, meaning you don't have to do a huge upgrade anymore. Everything will just seamlessly upgrade in the background as things get fixed. Um, yeah, uh, and as I mentioned before, Solus is available in two editions. As of this video, you've got the Budgie Flagship Edition, which is the one I'm using right now. It could be um, Budgie, 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 Budgie. I don't know how to pronounce it, to be honest. And then you've also got the Mate edition using the Mate desktop. Um, Solus also comes with a bunch of useful pre-installed software that includes the latest Firefox, as you can see I'm happily using. Uh, so if you're a Firefox user, then that would be great for you. It also comes with Thunderbird, Transmission for Torrenting, 
and the good and wonderful VLC. Package management on Solus is actually handled by EOPKG, which I'm going to just show you here, which, as the name implies, was made for Evolve OS, which is what um, Solus was called um, after it came back. I believe in 2013 it was shut down and then it came back, something like that. Either way, they tried, they they kind of went with Evolve OS, but then due to some trademark issues, they changed it back to Solus. But, so if we just take a look at um, EOPKG, you know, you get some good old, good old things, which I like that you don't have to use the, uh, the hyphens to call these things. So if I wanted to do something, it'd be just, if I wanted to install something per se, so I could do sudo EOPKG, oh, if I can type IT, which is for install or RM for remove, or I could just do up for update. And it says, hey, look, this all this repository information is up to date. No packages to upgrade. So that's, uh, that's a pretty good plus. Um, so yeah. Uh, so now let's talk about the desktop. Of course, as we already know, this is the flagship edition of Solus, and it uses the Budgie desktop. Um, the Budgie desktop environment is GTK3. Um, it tightly integrates with the Genome software stack. As you can see, there's also quite a resemblance to Genome here, or Gnome. I, I don't... I guess it depends on who you are and how you pronounce that. And, of course, it employs the underlying technology of it. Uh, up here on the left, you'll see we have the wonderful Budgie menu. It is simple, fast, yet elegant, in my opinion. Uh, if I wanted to search for something, like I know I installed Chrome on my other user account, because this is a, I actually do use this, it is installed to the system, um, but for this video, obviously gotta make a new user because hey that's what we gotta do uh, but you can just simply search for things so I'm, you see I've got Google Chrome here I want to search for Firefox I could if I wanted to search for some mouse settings I can just do that there uh, it's also categorized I mean, you can go through and see what you have in your categories which is great just great uh, also they have something called Raven uh, which is this menu right over here on the right. You can bring that up using your Windows key and N, otherwise known as the Meta key. Um, it, 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 let's see. Ah, it's a sidebar interface. I was thinking of the word and I got stuck. Uh, Raven is a sidebar interface that serves as your applet panel because as you can see, it's got applets over here. So you can see your calendar, your sound, your output, and your input. Um... It also has a notification center, which is right here. So if you have any notifications, they'll pop up right there and alert you. And it also houses the desktop customization settings. So you'll see this little cog wheel up here. You can click that and you'll see all of the options you can use. So you can go over here to general. You can change your theme. So you can change it from dark. Um, so you can actually make everything very light if you wanted to. Um, I actually do like that dark theme though. Uh, you've got a couple of pre-built um, things in here already. That one, then again, I'd probably need to turn off dark, huh? Maybe? Well, that's not something that I would probably use. That, we're, we're, we're not, we're not going to do that. No, no, we're not, we're not, no, no, we're just going to, there we go. Okay, yeah, we're just, we're, we're just going to leave that as is for now. Uh, also, as you know, if you right-click on your desktop, you can't do much with it. But, 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 if you go over here to Raven and you, int and you enable desktop icons, you'll see that, hey, you can actually use this as a, I don't know why that popped up over there, as a normal thing. So, hey, I'm a folder. Hey, look, you can have folders on your desktop. Isn't that pleasant? I know that was a big problem for people using GNOME or Genome or whatever, but honestly, I don't like having uh, desktop icons. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. I actually like having a very clean desktop. I like seeing my background. You can also change your window title fonts and your interface fonts and your document fonts and all, all that great stuff. Then you can modify your panel. Um, 
You can actually add more panels if you want. I'm not going to mess with it because I, I might break something. As you can already tell, I already broke the theme, so we're not going to do that again. Um, you can move it to the bottom if you wanted to have a more traditional uh, feel. However, I'd probably be the one to install Plink. Actually, I do have Plink installed on my actual user account. and Excuse me. I actually use it for you know, having it down here on the bottom. It's really elegant. I like it. Um, so yeah, you can move you can move things around. You can move your panel around. I'll put mine back at the top here. Come on now. Let's see. You can turn on and off shadows. As you can see, like there's no shadow here, but you can also do that. Stylized regions. Um, if we turn that off, you'll see that certain areas no longer are darker than those. So if you pay attention to this center right here, if we turn that on, you'll see it kind of gets a little darker. You also have a whole bunch of applets you can use. You can even install more applets from the software center, which I totally forgot to even uh, even mention. So let's go ahead and talk about the software center. Software center is very elegant. It's pretty simple to use and pretty um, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing missing is uh, searching within category, categories, categories, whatever. Uh, you can't really do that. You just have to use the search here, which is, I have no problem with that. They've also included this right here, which is third party, meaning you can install things from a third party and it be compiled locally on your system. And I do believe it uses Flatpak to do so. I could be completely wrong. If I'm wrong, leave a comment below. Uh, but I, I believe it's Flatpak. I believe it uses a Flatpak. And you can also check for updates as well. And if it does, you know, you can update it here. Um, other than that, it also checks for your updates. And... Other than that, that's pretty much it. You can automatically check for updates. Um, you can ena enable checking for updates on metered connections, just in case you had one. Uh, you can tell it to update every hour, daily, or weekly. And the types of updates you wish to be notified about. There you go. So yeah. That's, uh, let's see. Is there anything in Raven that I possibly missed? I don't think there's anything else in Raven. Raven is great. Oh, you've also got these controls down here. You can open up your settings. You can lock your screen. You can also power down your device. Um, up here in the top right or bottom right or wherever you might have yours at, you've got your time indicator, which I don't know about you guys, but I really like having my uh, clocks in 12 hour. Um, you've got your power, so you can log out, lock, suspend, hibernate, restart, shut down, things of that nature. You've got your Bluetooth toggle. Sound toggle, and this sound toggle is very minimal here, by the way. Um, it's very simple. You can't right-click it and access. If you wanted to change your sound preferences, you'd actually have to open up the separate application for that. But that's perfectly fine. It makes it to where you're not over here clicking a whole bunch of things by accident. You've got your power settings you can open up. Of course, this bell will also open Raven. And you've got your connections. And OBS for me, because I'm running OBS. Now... Um, as previously mentioned, Solus OS is not based on any other distro, uh, which is great for several different reasons. Uh, however, again, the pros to this would be, again, if a company or a corporate agenda like Ubuntu or they screwed up somewhere down the line, it wouldn't carry on to Solus. Um, also, you know that this was curated by the people who develop this project so you'll know that they hey you know they actually work really hard to do this and not only that but it also helps with the repositories the repositories don't have a bunch of crap in them that could you know be broken or things of that nature it doesn't have out of date items in the repository so on and so forth uh so let's start moving on to personal opinions uh the things that i like about solus os First of all, I really, really like the Budgie desktop. It's, it's very clean and well-designed. Um, it's fast on most modern computers, and it is customizable, believe it or not. You can actually change your themes, your icons, things of that nature. It's just don't be like me and don't know what you're doing and break it like I did just a few minutes ago. We, we just don't do that. And uh, again, uh, I can't brag enough about the clean repositories that aren't you know, cluttered with random or broken software. Um, some things that you will have to get used to are some cons of using a, uh, a distribution that's 
not as popular as others and is, you know, not based off of something is that some of your programs you'll probably have to compile, like Skype. Well, not in Solus's case. You can actually download Skype, the new Skype, uh, not the old, what is it, 4.2? Oh, that, that is hellacious. I, that was terrible. Anyways, the new Skype they've released, which is basically just the web-based Skype in its own little window. Um, you can actually download that from the software center through the third party and it'll locally compile it. Um, if you're a Discord user, you'll actually have to go to their website and download the tar.gz. And it's not that you have to compile that one. You just have to run it from terminal to open it and... Of course, you could add it using a, a menu editor. You could add it to your menu and so on and so forth. But you have to kind of get used to that. But I think it's worth it, in my opinion. So overall, Solos OS is, is great. Well, it's great for me. It depends on the user you are. Um, but for what I would use it for, I could definitely see this being a daily driver of mine. And I actually made a post on Google Plus saying, this is the only Linux distribution that I have decided to install straight from the live media. Like, I was just messing around in the live media. I usually give it extreme testing. I usually put it in a virtual machine. Of course, I can do it on here. And I, sometimes I put it on a, on a little hard drive. So that way I could, I could test it on real hard hardware and see how it goes. However, Solus, it just clicked with me for some reason. And straight from the live media, I just... I just ditched Linux Mint right there, just gone. I uh, completely reformatted that hard drive, and here we are on Solus OS. So, for the average user who's, you know, you don't have to be advanced to be able to use Solus, but some general knowledge is uh, is definitely definitely good for you. I completely just forgot to uh, give you guys a little rundown on what it looked like on hardware because I am special. So, as far as resources go, I'm using about 1.7 gigabytes of memory right now. And of course, I am recording with OBS and I'm I've got the settings kind of up there so that way we can try to get decent graphics and not a blurry screen. Um but it is what it is. And as you can tell, OBS is kind of really messing with my CPU there. This is only an Intel Core i3, so you got to give me credit where it's due. Otherwise, your CPU uh, usage would actually be a bit lower. And I do believe Solus OS runs generally around 700 to 900 megabytes in your RAM. But uh, as far as, uh, you know, just aside, even doing what I'm doing now, it is still a very responsive system, so I could open up uh, things fairly quickly. I am on a actual hard disk drive it's not an ssd the only um only ssd i have has actually got windows on it and yeah i know me windows uh, long story uh but yeah i'll have to throw this in at the at the end of the video because i'm so special but uh yeah editing is not a very good uh strong point of mine so again if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you disliked it and don't like me because i uh, just forget things and things of that nature. Go ahead and give me a, a thumbs down and yell at me in the comments section and maybe I'll remember to actually throw system uh, resources into the into the mix. Uh, but now, now I think I can safely say I'll see you guys in the next video.